Roughly 60 years ago, the first birth control pill was approved in the United States. Since then, this tiny little pill has revolutionized the way we look at family planning, and right now over 100 million women use the pill worldwide. But have you wondered why there's no pill for men? Why is it comparatively easy to block the development of egg cells, but not the production of sperm? Well, if you've asked yourself these questions, that's kind of weird. But weird is also unconventional, and unconventional is the driving force of science. We love weird. And right now there's a number of clinical trials trying to identify the perfect new male contraceptive. My name is Ken Steinig and today we'll talk about the male birth control pill, a possible revolution in reproductive medicine. Before we discuss the male pill, let's briefly talk about its female counterpart. The birth control from woman, or just the pill, has revolutionized humankind. Before the pill was invented, we also had other oral contraceptives, but they were not as effective and quite dangerous. This includes, for example, eating ancient plants or also drinking mercury. And consuming mercury, by the way, is as dangerous as standing in the middle of a crowd during a karaoke night while Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody starts to play. Got it? Freddie Mercury. Okay, never mind. How does the pill actually work? As we all know, the pill is based on the administration of certain hormones. Although the precise composition of hormones might differ between companies, they generally all contain progestin together with estrogen. Progestin is a synthetic type of progestogen, and they, together with estrogen, are key elements of the menstrual cycle. In a nutshell, the menstrual cycle is based on periodic changes of sex hormones over the course of several weeks, which lead to the maturation of eggs. This cycle started during puberty and continues until menopause. The only time this cycle is interrupted is during pregnancy when estrogen and progesterone start to spike until birth. Through this process, the development of the baby is supported while the maturation of further eggs is being prevented. And it's also how the birth control pill works. We administer a form of progesterone and estrogen. You can really think of that as a pregnancy simulation. For the higher levels of the aforementioned hormones, the body does not mature any eggs. And here's actually the first reason why there is no male birth control pill. While women will naturally have higher levels of estrogen and progesterone when they become pregnant, men have no such mechanisms. Moreover, it is also more difficult to suppress the production of millions of sperm cells which are released during an ejaculation. And a small fun fact, during one ejaculation, the number of released sperm cells can be bigger than the 300 million monthly Twitter users. Just if you want an interesting topic for your next party. Nonetheless, researchers have tried to lower the number of produced sperm cells in a reversible manner. In fact, ideas for male oral contraceptive have been around for over five decades. And although some treatments have not been very successful, there are right now some very promising clinical trials. In 2012, for example, a gel was tested which contained nesterone and testosterone. Similar to what we've already heard when we talked about the female oral contraceptive, this gel is also based on the administration of hormones. Nesterone is a synthetic form of progesterone, which together with testosterone impacts sperm production. By rising the levels of nesterone and testosterone in the blood, the brain shuts down further production of testosterone on sperm cells. And the combination of these two hormones was chosen as their administration only leads to mild adverse effects. So, during this study in 2012, men rubbed the gel on the back on the shoulder for several weeks. Then sperm production was measured. And indeed it was found that over 89% of all participants exhibited significantly less sperm cells. There also have been other attempts to create a birth control gel for men. And right now another clinical trial has started, which is based on the administration of a gel, which once again contains testosterone and this time progesterone. And again the gel is applied on the shoulder of the participants, but this time for over a year. To assess the effects of the gel on different ethnic groups, recruiting countries include Sweden, the UK, but also Chile or Kenya. And for right now, this contraceptive method might be very successful. However, there are also some key disadvantages. Since the gel is applied on the skin, we cannot really control the dosage of the administered hormones. As a result, men might experience some side effects, including acne, gain of weight or changes in mood. Moreover, the libido might also be increased upon the administration of this gel, which is a side effect that also affects women as much as men. But this is actually not the only thing that might impact women. If they come into contact with this gel, 
they are exposed to high levels of testosterone. This might mess with their hormone levels, which then on the other hand can lead to, for example, the unwanted growth of hair. So let's see how this trial goes. Alternatively to the usage of gels, other studies have focused on the injection of hormones or the development of a male birth control pill. And indeed, the injection of hormones lowered sperm counts in a clinical phase 2 trial. However, this study was terminated due to possible side effects, which again included changes in mood or weight or acne. What is important about this study is that the effects were reversible, meaning that men became fertile again. And now we finally come to the male birth control pill. This pill has already been developed and passed first clinical trials. Initially, it has been shown that this pill induces lower sperm production and infertility in rabbits. After the treatment stopped, however, the rabbits became fertile again. So what about humans? In a clinical trial, 82 men between the ages of 18 and 50 were either given a birth control pill or a placebo three times a day over the period of a month. Those men who had received a birth control pill showed a significant decrease in testosterone levels. It was concluded that this should also lower sperm production. What I want to point out about this study is, however, that the sperm count was not evaluated. Compared to the aforementioned gel, the birth control pill has the main advantage that we can control the levels of administered hormones. But how does this pill work in principle? The main component here is DMAO, a progesterone. Similar to all the other treatments, DMAO also suppresses the production of male hormones. After being taken up by the cell, DMAO is converted into DMA, which then binds to the same receptors as testosterone. And as a consequence, less testosterone is being produced, which should then also lower sperm count. So let's see whether the birth control pill or the gel turns out to be robust. Today we've talked about different contraceptives for men. But what do you think? Would you or your loved one take one of these pills? What do you think about lowering the production of sperm cells? Does it sound risky or safe? I'm interested in your opinion. And I also hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button if you haven't done so. And tell all of your friends about the pill for men. And with that, I'll see ya.